phone to ring to, to try to sell something. That's right, so, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a way it's, different it's, world it's, now. Yeah, it's come a long way. And like, I would say probably, like, even into owning my first business, I, okay. I, I kind of felt mm. I didn't want to tell anybody because I thought it was a it was a bad thing. But Working with your uncle, what was the most memorable lesson that you learned? The most memorable lesson, I would say... And eventually you get to a point where you clear a million dollars for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it grew like real fast. Like it was like first year was like 250 and then second year was like 800. And then we, we, we passed that, that million mark and the million mark is everybody, everybody yeah. wants that million mark. And I wanted it too. Like yeah. I really did. I thought like, how cool would that be? Yeah. Like, how cool million would that dollars. be? Like to yeah. say like, We are back with another episode of the Grind Theory Talk Show. You see, I got it right this time. Not the podcast, but the talk show. So we are back with a new episode, y'all. Um, just a quick... Uh, actually, first things first. Before we start anything, we always got to make sure that we give thanks to the big man upstairs. Because uh, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. Our guest wouldn't be here. Um, or he wouldn't be here. So we always want to make sure that we give... Thanks to the man upstairs for taking us throughout the day, bringing us here safely, um, and just helping us to have a great proceedings uh, for our interview and, you know, no technical difficulties or anything to that um, extent. Now, so a quick recap. Last episode, we had the opportunity to interview two champs, one future champ and one former champ. We had Paige Shoot. And we had John David Jackson on the podcast. John David Jackson is a former two-time heavy, no, sorry, two-time middleweight champion of the world in two different weight classes. And then we had Paige Shoot, who is the future champ. I told him I'm going to call him the future champ until he becomes a champ. So future champ, he's the number one prospect in Canada, a number one ranked prospect in Canada at the super flyweight division. And we got to dive into a really good conversation. We dived into the world of boxing, you know, some of the struggles and obstacles that they encounter. Um, and I know one of the struggles that Paige was said that he encountered was he noticed that uh, having to fight and leaving it in the hands of the judges. Some of the times, even though he had clearly won, the judges would score the card in the opposite, in the favor of the opposition. And so he realized that he has to take it into his own hands. He's got to make sure that when he gets into the ring, he's got to go for the kill. Um, we also dived into the importance of hard work and discipline. You can't do anything without having discipline. If you want to accomplish anything great, any success, you must be disciplined. And I think that's something that our guest today is going to be able to attest to as well. Um, we also dived into the mindset when you're getting into the ring and outside of the ring. Um, it was a great, great episode. A lot of gems were dropped. A lot of gems. So today, though, today, 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 we got another special guest, and I got to come with the appropriate energy, so you know I'm going to pick it up a little bit. But um, our guest today is a born entrepreneur. He found at a young age he had a passion for business and a knack for finding solutions to problems and profiting from them you know making money from them i'll give you an example at a young age he used to live you know close to a golf course and the golfers used to hit the golf balls over you know over the road into the grass he used to go collect these golf balls and sell them back to the golf course making some money that for you guys out there that's a hustle that you know just so you know now you just just give credit to the to the grand theory talk show and our guest but um from that, he went on to go to Sturgeon Composite High School, where he put his emphasis in business management. Unfortunately, due to some family issues, he dropped out. He dropped out, but he was urged to go follow one of his big influences in his life, which was his uncle. So he decided to go work with his uncle, and in the process, his uncle taught him a lot of business, taught him the values and how to do business. With that being done, he decided to go and get his footing on his own, you know, go out and venture on his own. And so venturing out on his own, he went out to start his own businesses. 
It wasn't a success at first. He encountered, he failed many times, but each time he failed, he learned from his mistakes and improved until he started his repair shop. He opened his repair shop and was able to help him clear the million dollar threshold. From that, he has been in business for over 13 years of experience, starting multiple businesses, such as he is the owner and the founder. Don't worry, I'm going to go through a list, so just bear with me. He is the owner and founder of Textology. He is the owner and founder of GPM Marketing. He is also the owner and founder of Luxury Rentals, Inc., and he is also the founder of Blue Sky Business Development Corp., which is literally embodies what he's all about, finding solutions to problems for businesses. He is not only that, but he is also an author of two books centered around business and success. Our guest today is literally the embodiment of what the Grind Theory talk show is all about. Overcoming obstacles, facing obstacles and struggles, overcoming them, and learning from them. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce our guest, Jesse Lacusta. How's it going, my man? man? Good to see you. Glad to be here. No problem. Glad to have you on. Glad to have you on. So, Jesse. That introduction, I'm telling you, <laughs> you did your homework. That's yes, sir. Awesome. Good I, job. I, I was, I was, I was, uh, I had a, a good, uh, a good mentor who told him, who gave me a little bit of insight. Oh, yeah. Uh, gave me a little bit of insight, <laughs> on, insight into, into that. Good, good. Um, so, you know, every hero and every villain has an origin story. 100%. And so it's the same thing for our guests here on the talk show. So, we would like to dive into your origin story. I wanted you to take us back to where it all started and some of your earliest memories. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, like you already said, I think it started off a little bit before the whole golf, golf <laughs> ball, um, retrieving golf balls and selling it back to the golf course. Um, <clears throat> probably went back to when I um, was 10 years old, I would say, and uh, just repairing bikes is what I, what I actually did. Was so I collected all these old bikes that people were throwing away and I would take them apart and clean them up, polish them up and see if I can build a bike out of it and sell it. So that's kind of where it started. I, I didn't actually know what I was doing or, or how to, how to actually do it. But, uh, my dad was a huge, huge influence. Um, mm. just teaching from a young age that you can basically make money from pretty much anything. Like as, as long as you're, you know, as long as you have the right mindset. So mindset mm. is, is really, really big. I love, I love but, that. But, um, yeah, it just, it, it went from there and, uh, I, I grew up on a small acreage Okay. And we had chickens, so I started selling <laughs> eggs. Like it was it just kind of worked its way all the way and then it went to, you know, golf balls and then uh mm -hmm. yeah, I started to work for my uncle and um that was making 3 bucks a day and oh, wow. Um yeah, it's so I, I <laughs> started, started from the bottom from the bottom. Started from the bottom for sure. So actually but, I, yeah, sorry, I, was, I have a, I have a question yeah, just before ahead. that. So you said that uh when you you were you were repairing bikes, you were selling eggs for chickens. You were you were um, selling the golf balls. Yeah. Like, what were you doing with the money? Were you putting it back into the business? Were you you I know? Was some you were, you're spending I some. Yeah, I can't say that I was just like because I I didn't really know. I didn't mm -hmm. really understand about like reinvesting. I was way mm -hmm. way too young, and um, so yeah, I did take profits and and uh, and, and 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 spend it on <laughs> on a few things for myself, but. You know, at the end of the day, that that was another learning curve. It's yeah. like, you know, sometimes I would spend everything that I made and then it's, you know, uh, something else comes along or a deal comes along and I can't buy it. Mm. Right. So that's that's a huge, huge thing. If you if you don't have the money to buy or the money to flip stuff or mm -hmm. to start a business, it's it's pretty tough. Even though this day and age, like starting a business, you don't need a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. uh, not like back in the day when it was just brick and mortar. You know, we're fortunate enough to have the internet and we can, you know, start Shopify stores or we can go marketplace and find free stuff. Like you got to remember, we, we weren't able to do that back that's, then. Yeah. Like even for doing ads, like we're, we're so fortunate to be able to just sell something online. I can put something on marketplace within five minutes. Yeah, somebody well, I don't know if you remember what, what the bargain finder is. But basically you, a bargain finder was a newspaper and you would place an ad on a Thursday and then you would have to wait a whole week 
for it to come out next Thursday just to advertise to sell something. Oh wow! And then on top of it, you know, we didn't have you know you didn't have like cell phones and stuff like that just before you know what I mean. Like it was mm -hmm. it was right there. Cell phones were pretty much just coming out, so people would have to stay at home and wait mm -hmm. for the phone to ring to to try to sell something. To try, so, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a way it's, different it's, world it's, now. Yeah, it's come a long way, and and that's why I really say like anybody that <clears throat> wants to get out of whatever position they're in or make, make more money. Like it really is the easiest time to do it is, mm. is, is right now. Mm. So I, I like that you said that we're going to come back to that actually. Sure. So, so you, you kind of grew up on that. So I'm assuming now, you know, having this background, you're, you're, you're selling eggs, you're, you're going to the golf course, you're, you're, you're finding golf balls. I'm like, okay, this guy has a, a super entrepreneurial mindset. And I'm assuming that, you know, from that you excelled in school. Yeah, well, um, you would think so, but uh, sometimes it doesn't work that way. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, um, people that excel in school and have all the degrees and have all the college and everything and what have you, they start a business and they can't do it because they don't have street smarts. So mm. I honestly think street smarts is the number one thing that you, you need to have. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not the only thing. But no, I definitely I was I was not strong in school. I, I was in all of the all of the slower classes. Mm. Um, I actually was in. Um, uh, I had to be moved from from one school because I wasn't able to to learn with the rest of the kids, so I had to go wow. to a different one. Wow. But um, yeah, so it was really tough in school. It um, you know I just didn't. Uh, I knew I was smart, but uh, when it came to like the books and memorizing mm -hmm. and and doing all the things like I'm still to this day, I'm like real bad with a grammar. Mm -hmm. So like people are like, yeah, gotta fix your grammar. I'm like, ah, I just, that's me. So yeah. like, I, I don't have really good grammar. So, but you know, at the end of the day, it's, uh, that sort of thing. You don't have to have it to, uh, to excel in life. You don't have to have it. You know, I didn't even graduate. So mm -hmm. to use that as a, as a crutch, if anybody is out there like that, didn't graduate and using that you know, saying I can't start a business cause I didn't graduate. Well, so mm. far from the truth yep. it doesn't Proof. matter what situation you mm. have gone through mm -hmm. doesn't matter how many bad cards you've been dealt mm. there's always time i don't care if you're 30 years old 40 50 60 years old there's always time that right there's so. a gem <laughs> that definitely That's is it. a gem yeah. no and so um so you know you're saying that you're you're placed in all these like slower classes even having to switch schools yeah right what was your mindset during that time? Were you were you down on yourself, or did you not really realize at that time? Yeah. Like, what, what was, well, what was... no, I, I was I was pretty down on myself, mm. uh, to be totally honest. Mm. I, um, you know, I was looking at everybody else, and everybody mm. else seemed to be, you know, everybody else was going to the next grade, and you know, I was in all the slower classes, and just like mentally, you know, I, you could tell me something a bunch of times, and I just couldn't pro mm. couldn't process it just because I wasn't interested See? in what was. Mm. If we were talking about, you know, buying and selling or this or that, I would, I would pick right you up, you know, if you switch the context, yeah. I probably would be pretty good in school. Yeah. And I think like this day and age, there's a lot of kids that are in school that are in the same position. So it's not that they're dumb, but they actually feel that they're, they're dumb because they don't learn on the same level as other people. Mm -hmm. And that's so not true. Like it really is. Cause some of the smartest people and some of the biggest businesses this day and age, they didn't go to college. Yep. Some didn't graduate, and they're basically running, you know, huge, huge corporations. So, it's it's not a limitation. There is there's and no limitations. I love that you touched on that because even my my even me myself, I actually, I know that I'm smart, but it's just the I learn really well by doing things, by experiencing it hands on. Sometimes me sitting in the class and like, it was it was hard for me at times. Like yeah. I remember. Even when I uh, actually got my scholarship to university uh, to go to, to Halifax, I had other schools that recruited me that I couldn't go to because my GPA was too low. Yeah. My GPA was a 1.1, a 1. 1, I think, right? But I knew that didn't determine that it wasn't an indicator of my actual abilities. So how were you able to, I mean, you know, now having so many successful businesses and doing so many different things, how did, did, did at any point did you not graduating school ever linger in your mind saying that you can't do this thing? Yeah. hundred <clears throat> percent. Like when I, when I did, when I did drop out, I felt like I, I was, 
there was no way I was going to be able to get a job. Um, I kind of got forced into the dropout because just like family situation, I had to leave home. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was out on my own, like with, uh, you know, no education, no nothing at 17. Hmm. So I was like, I, I didn't have a choice. I think that that was probably the biggest thing that I didn't have a choice. I had to figure it out, mm. but right out the get go. Yeah. I was, it was pretty hard on myself. I'm like, yeah, I, I tried to finish my schooling and I thought it was like super important and I didn't want to be that guy. I thought, you know, if you don't have, if you don't even have your diploma, people are going to look at you and exactly. look down and like, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I was like that for quite a few years. Uh, mm. like, I would say probably like even into owning my first business, I, okay. I, I kind of felt mm. I didn't want to tell anybody cause I thought it was a, it mm. was a bad thing, but now I, I really don't like, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I, I think that, you know, people, people go through life and they, they get held up on, on Small, superficial stuff things, like yeah. that, that, um, that just doesn't really help you. So how, how did you kind of overcome that? Like, how did you overcome that feeling? Um, like I said, um, I think I, I think I overcame it once, once I started to see success. Cause mm. I always had it in my head that like, I, I, I'm not smart in school, but like, I definitely am smart enough to figure, figure. this out. And mm. if there's other people that were in the same situation as me, mm-hmm. which, you know, there definitely is, it doesn't matter what bad situation you're in right now. Mm-hmm. There's always somebody either in the same situation that got through oh, it or oh, in the, oh. in a worse situation. Yep. So I always knew that from, from a young age that there was always something more. And I could tell that I'm pretty sure I could figure this out. Like I know I can figure this out. Mm -hmm. So I always had that mindset. So I didn't have like a set plan. I didn't Mm -hmm. have at that point, I didn't really have anybody that was, that was, that was guiding me at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I got a a job that, uh, I was working nights, um, and that didn't, didn't last very long. So, <laughs> so then I thought to myself, I'm like, who, who could I get around mm. that is like the closest to what I want to do? And mm-hmm. like, th- that was my uncle. He mm-hmm. owned his own business. So I basically sat down with him and we had a, we had a long discussion and I'm like, look, I don't know what, I don't know. I know that I have the ability to like do something more. And, um, he basically took me under his wing and we just started from there and he, mm-hmm. he pretty much molded me into, into starting a business. So. Okay. So, so talk about, talk about that. Talk about now working with your uncle now. Like it's, it was a, it's a blessing to have somebody that has, is been where you want to be and have them around. Cause it's, I know like it's very hard, especially nowadays to find good mentors, yep. especially the people that are going to care about you, especially him being your uncle. I'm sure that he had a, a, another level of caring about For you. Sure. Right. Yeah. So talk about what was like, uh, the experience of working on that with your uncle. Well, it was, uh, <clears throat> It was it was an experience that I like I like I've never experienced before. <laughs> it was something that was just so so odd odd but familiar because mm-hmm. I learned about flipping stuff and I learned about mm. you know but business is very similar to that but it, it's business has got a to- totally other you know end of it other aspects. So it was um, it was it was interesting. I, I I started to just catch on like real quick, and I was always like. Um, you know, he always taught me to like, you know, you, you got to watch, watch how people mm. react, watch how people mm. answer you, watch how mm. your words affect other people. And, mm. and that was a big thing on him that, you know, nobody likes, nobody likes a boss. Somebody, mm. you know, everybody likes a leader. Nobody likes a boss. Mm. It's just like when you're buying stuff, like nobody, everybody likes buying stuff, but nobody really wants to be sold to. Do you know mm. what I mean? So they want to come that, to it on their own. And that goes the same for like, if you come up and ask me for advice, even though you might know the answer to it, you don't want to hear it from me. Mm -hmm. Like you want to come up with those reasons for your, for your, for yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think when, when, when I started to work for my uncle, it was a huge, huge eye opener. And he, uh, he put, he, he put a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff on my shoulders just, at, yeah. at a young age. It's, he shouldn't have, like, it was like way, it was way too much. Like I was managing people when I like, I was basically a kid yeah. and, how's that to, uh, it was it was very weird feeling because <laughs> they're older they're, they're older they're, like yeah. i am not i should not be telling people what, <laughs> what to, to do. do and i and i i didn't tell them what to do i uh, basically you know language is a huge thing so mm. i you know i was asking them, can you help me with this can you help mm. me with that you know mm. um 
my uncle said, you know, come out, I got to come outside and uh, he wants this move. Could you, you know, would you appreciate, you know, I'd appreciate it if you helped me with that. So mm. there's, there's different ways that, so, that you had to, cause um, they would, they wouldn't have listened if so I said, Hey, go move that. Like, yeah, no, actually. So you, you touched on something that I, I, I really like. So, um, what would you say you, you had, you, you were managing, you know, people older than your adults at a very young age. Yeah. So in that process of, of managing and being under your uncle's uh, tutelage, what do you think, what would you say is the most important thing when it comes to management of other people or managing, managing people? What is the most important skill to have or thing to, I, to know? I would, I would honestly say like language is, is, is a huge, huge, mm. huge thing. And, um, like I know for myself, I, I think it, it might be a little bit different than most because at this point in my life, I, I know that I can pick up on certain things that other people might not pick up on. And I think mm. I was doing that at a younger age and not really, mm. not really knowing, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, um, but language, if you can, if you can learn how to communicate better on a different level, it's, it's, it's going to change your game. Mm. So, and that's, that's where it comes to being a boss or a leader, right? Mm. So bosses don't care about language. They're like, mm. you you do this, and if you don't, you're out. Yeah. But a leader's like, they want you to finish the job, but mm. you know they're teaching you to do it in 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 a way that works the best for you. Because mm. if you have an end, if you have a goal or if you have a job to do, there's not just you know as well as I do. There's there's not just one way to do that job. Exactly. So I I could be doing it a different way than you and you know it, we it can works. both get it done the same amount of time but mm -hmm. if i do it your way i may not like it, it and yeah. it'll take twice as much time so and and i and i love that you brought up there the difference because I was, I was actually going to ask you that what's the difference between a boss and a leader and uh you touched on it i think so a boss is just like irregardless of what you want to say I was, they're like hey go get do that thing go clean the garbage go do this go do yeah. that and even i think a big thing even with language language i think is approach so like even for example if i'm if i'm going to talk to a girl if i go talk to a girl and i say hey what's your name or hey give me your number she might say no but i'm like oh hey what's your name well where are you from how are you doing then it's a, it's a different, it's a, it's a difference. A different, yeah, it's a different aspect. It's a way sure. different aspect, yeah. right? And, and you can get a different result. And I think that's the same way when, when it comes to when you're dealing with people. You have to respect people. You can't just come in and just... Well, you, you got to talk, talk to them the way you would want to be talked to, right? And exactly. With a boss, somebody that's you know barking orders, um, they don't care about the people, to be totally honest. And they usually, like nine times out of 10, they care about just profits and that's it. Mm -hmm. So somebody that's a leader, they, they actually care about the people. They know their employees' names. They, they know if they have an off day. And that's where like culture comes into mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. like culture is a big thing. If you're trying to build like a really good culture in, in, in your business, nine times out of 10, if you're doing that, you're a leader, you're not a boss. Mm -hmm. Bosses usually don't care about culture. culture as much, right? Unless mm. they can maximize nice. profits somehow, oh. which it, <laughs> it usually doesn't work out in the end, right. anyways. So, 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 would you say that um, being a leader, in order to have a successful business, being a leader is a, is, a, is a better option than being a boss? Well, like it totally depends on, I guess, your, yourself. Like mm. for for myself, yeah, being a leader. Mm. Um, I, I don't like, um, you know, telling people what to do mm. or, or bossing people around and cause I can feel that yeah, they, that, they're not happy that that's yeah. happening. So, yeah. um, but there are, you know, there are, um, there are business owners that, that still do that. Um, but I, I don't think it's, it's the right way. You know, mm -hmm. you, you want to treat people with respect and treat them the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. Um, because nine times out of 10, that boss one day they're going to realize, it's, you know what? I didn't really treat people very, and it's, mm. you know, it's probably like their last couple of years, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like they got yeah. sick and they're like, you know what, maybe I could have treated people like a little bit better. Living with that regret. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. And so, um, actually just on the topic of culture, how important is culture to a successful business? I know we mentioned, uh, you brought up some examples in our behind the scenes conversations with Zappos, Zappos where, um, if you could elaborate on that, where you yeah, said, sure. um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, like you said, like culture, I think culture is, is, is up there like almost number one, mm -hmm. but Zappos, Zappos is a huge company and they grew from like nothing to like billions in, in, 
in no time at all. But their interview process was like really, really interesting mm-hmm. and it caught my attention like big time. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> the way their interview process worked is they would take like 20 candidates and mm-hmm. they would set them up in a room. Mm-hmm. They would, you know, set up a bunch of seats and, and uh, they had um, uh, one, each person would go up on, I guess you would call it a stage or in front of the group of people and they would, you know, explain who they are and they would explain uh, their qualities and mm-hmm. their qualifications and pretty much everything. And the people that were hiring were watching and you would think that they would be watching the person at the front of the room. Mm-hmm but they weren't. So Mm -hmm. they were watching all of the people in the audience and what they were watching for was the people that were trying to like, that were actually engaging with, with the person, Mm -hmm. uh, like paying attention to what they were saying on stage and just really, really caring about that other person and their story. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, the other people were on their phones, they were looking Mm -hmm. down, they were kind of smirking or, you know, Mm -hmm. making, remarks or whatever right so those were the people that they would actually they would they would yeah they would they would get rid of them so um but um there's another aspect of that and i um was once they they got like five or ten people once they 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 got those people they would still um they would offer them i think it was like three thousand dollars to not take the job wow so they (laughs) you could honestly tell like you could see that who like they were trying to build a culture and they mm. were trying to attract people that, you know, were willing to, to actually, you know, not take that money mm. and say, no, I'm not taking that money. I believe in this company. I believe in this, this culture. I believe in this team. I want to be a part of it and I'm here for the, for the long term. Mm-hmm. So that was a, that was a huge, huge thing that, that they did that worked really well. Oh. So. No, I, and I, and I, and I remember when you told me that I was like, man, I really, really liked that because then you're actually hiring people that you know actually believe in what your company's 100%. vision is, what your company's goals are, yep. and they they agree with it, right? Because you can hire 10 just people that don't really care, and yep. they might not be as productive as the two people that you hire that actually 100%. care about the vision and the goal. And so so now, um, kind of after you've uh, been at your uncle, how, how long were you at your, uh, did you work for your uncle? Um, I was there for probably about... Um, Five, probably five years okay. like in total mm-hmm. um but i started my business two years uh, prior to that okay so it took me two to two to three years to actually get enough traction to call it quits okay but um yeah i was i was working full-time for for three years and then part-time for two to three years. somewhere in there okay and so in your time working with your uncle what was the most memorable lesson that you learned the most memorable lesson, I would say, honestly, like uh, the communication part, like mm. that was so, so it was, it was huge. Like I, I actually, like when, when I started to learn that communication was so big, it was like a light bulb went off. I'm like, I need to learn everything Same. I need. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I need to learn and everything. everything about, yeah. And then I got interested in like psychology and like mm-hmm. why people do what they do. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, it was, it was like a huge, huge light bulb that went off. So, mm. um, I'm an ongoing student to this day. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, you, there's, you know, there's nobody that, you know, knows everything. Mm-hmm. So I'm constantly trying to like refine, you know, I keep how learning. I communicate and refine how I am and how I come across and, mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's definitely a skill that, uh, that can help you with anything. Yeah. Like it's not just business. Yeah. Like we're talking communication with friends, uh, family, like language communication is, is huge. Even if you have kids, if your communication is not good and your language isn't good mm. and you go tell them to do something, well, they're not going to do it. Yeah. But if you're good at communication and language, you can do the same thing with a kid mm-hmm. as with an employee mm-hmm. or a friend, you know, influence is, 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 is a, is a big thing. And that's where communication comes in. If you're good at communicating, then you'll be really good at influencing sure. people to make really good decisions. So. And, and so what do you think are the keys to being a good or an effective communicator? Like do, uh, language is a, is a, is a big one. Do, is it, is it, uh, like what are some effect, like what is an effective way to communicate? What makes me an effective communicator? Well, language is a part of it, but, mm. um, obviously like you were already saying, like language is, is, is super important, but 
it's not just that when you're influencing somebody it's not just language like mm. you want to you want to be able to to build rapport with that person mm. so if it's a customer you want to find out some information uh prior mm -hmm. so then you can basically sell back mm. what they want right mm. so it's same with like when you're going into an interview like everybody's super like nervous mm -hmm. you know you have your resume yeah. this person is going to judge you like yeah. am i going to get the job like what a lot of people don't know, if you just start the interview turning some questions around as the person that's trying to get the job, you'll get the job. Mm -hmm. So like to give you an example, like usually when, you, when you're trying to get a job, you'll sit there and you'll wait for them to, you know, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you, blah, 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 which is fine. And as soon as they ask the first question, just turn around. Be like, before I answer that, do you mind me asking um, how come the last person didn't work out? And they'll tell you all the reasons that this did, person didn't work and out. Go with that. So then basically you just, you just, just flip that. Yeah, just you just flip it. it. <laughs> yeah. So you're throwing, you're throwing everything back at them that you're basically telling them everything that they want to hear. And, mm. um, that's not a bad thing. Like that's, mm. that's exactly what you want. You want, mm. you know, if you're qualified for the job, you should be able to get the job. Yeah. So, 100%. um, like a lot of people that are super qualified, they get really nervous in the job. Sometimes they don't get it because they don't say the right things because they're nervous. Yeah. Not, not that they're like not that qualified. qualified for the yeah. job. Yeah. So, no, it's, um, yeah, that, that part of it's really, really important. You know, building rapport, okay. um, is, is, is a huge, huge thing. So, okay. and, and you can do that in a lot of different ways. Nice. Like it's not just language. It's, tonality yeah. like keywords you know yeah. people use keywords on a regular basis mm -hmm. like you know some people say 100 percent a lot right yeah. like so building rapport you want to talk back to that person 100 percent let's do it 100 that's me uh, yeah 100 so no i i like that and so okay so now you're 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 at your uncle's here for about five years and you said that um, you started, you had started venturing out into your own business. Yep. And so you ended up, uh, you were working full time and you scheduled down your hours to working part time and then venturing out into your, into your business. Yeah, correct. I know um, this, this, this one I'm actually going to, is also for me and I, I know Ori will be interested in this as well, is kind of, can you kind of break down how you got to the point where you were comfortable to leave your job? Because like for someone who like, you know, like maybe like me or, or for other people out there that are, are you know, they don't want to be at their job anymore. They want to start their own yep. thing. Kind of what steps did you take to get there? There was, there was no real steps. Like mm. looking back, there might be steps. Like mm. I kind of point out what steps, but uh, like when it was happening, mm. I was not comfortable. Mm. I was uncomfortable well, doing it. Uh, there was mm. no, like there was no sign or there was mm. nothing saying that this is the right time do it now because everything is stable. No, everything mm. was unstable. Stable. Everything was all over the place. And it's mm. always, it's never going to be a hundred percent. You're mm. never going to be comfortable. You're mm. never, but you just make it work. Even though like I had a, I had an end goal in mind. So there was nothing, even though I didn't know how to get that goal, I knew that I could get like, I could get to that point. I don't, mm. wasn't sure how I was going to do it, but I knew I, I could do it. Mm. So I didn't have all the answers. It wasn't the right time. I didn't have a whole bunch of money. Even mm. when I went full time, like it was crazy. I should not have, like I really should not have done yeah. that. Like it yeah. was just like it was, it was, it was insane that I actually did it at that point. So, so yeah, there's never a right time. Mm -hmm. It's just like you know somebody that has a kid. They're just well, mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm gonna pay for this. It's crazy. Yeah, sure. Like, but guess what? They figure out a way. They figure it out a way. And, have and to. I, I, I love that you said that, right? Because even when we started the podcast, I was mentioning too. When we started the podcast, um, we didn't have any like we I, like I had I had a plan, but we just started. Yep. And then as we started, we figured out no things. Okay, we need mics. We need a, a audio interface. We need this. We need the cords. We need this thing. We need a space. Yep. And it just kind of kept building. But I think the biggest thing is just starting. Once sure. you start, you're gonna figure out things because planning, planning, planning. It never goes according to plan. So that's <laughs> that's a that's a big problem that people have is that they're they want it to be perfect yeah so then they wait so long for yeah. it to be perfect and a lot of times it never gets to that point and then you know one year goes down the road two or three or four or five and they're like oh, i've been trying to do this for five years mm. well just start, start it start yeah. making 
you know, start making mistakes. Yeah. Just pull the trigger and just let's go. Mm-hmm. Like, and you're going to, you're going to, there's going to be, you're going to run into mistakes all the time. You're going to mess up. Like, honestly, I've messed up probably more than anybody. Like mm-hmm. I've made so many mistakes. It's, it's insane. But now I make a mistake. I'm like, huh. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, I, lo- I, lo- I love them. It's, <laughs> it's like, yeah. it, it doesn't even, it doesn't, doesn't even really matter. Stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't matter at this point because I still make mistakes yeah. and, and you just brush off and, and some lessons are harder than others. And, and you just mm-hmm. brush off and take the lesson and carry mm-hmm. on. So, and, and, and I, I remember, I remember I was asking you, um, we both kind of discussed that we we're both kind of impulsive, you know, impulsive, yep. even jumping out, jumping out to, Hey, I want to leave my, my job. I want to, you know, jump out and do this For thing. Sure. And I was asking you if, um, if your impulsiveness has ever, you know, kind of came back to bite you. Yep. And, uh, I remember you saying, yes, but make lots of mistakes, make lots of mistakes, For make sure. lots of mistakes. That mentality where did that come from? Because I don't hear that in lots of people saying to make mistakes. So what did that, and what's your, what's your kind of, uh, uh, what's your thought process behind that saying? See, I, I'm not sure what, like, there are certain things that it, you, you just can't really explain. It's like intuition almost. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like when you have an intuition or you have that gut feeling, you're like, you can't explain where that comes from. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. when it, when it comes to something like that, I, I honestly... Mm. I can't even tell you where, where it comes from. It's mm-hmm. just like, yeah. I don't know if it's instinctive or, or, mm. or what it is, but it, um, yeah, it just, it just kind of comes to me. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's, it's one of those things that's just very mm-hmm. odd. No. So it, um, I, I, I remember, I remember you mentioning, um, that if you, if, 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 uh, if you make a mis- if I, if I make a mistake yeah. and you make a mistake, but you're waiting, you're planning, planning, planning. But I jump out and I make that mistake and I, by my, my impulsiveness. For sure. I will probably, I can learn from that mistake before in your, yeah. in your while oh, you're planning for your five years. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up yeah. because, you know, making mistakes fast is probably a really good thing that you can learn to do quick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And nobody, nobody wants to, nobody wants to make mistakes quick because then they look bad, right? They mm-hmm. look bad in front of everybody. But like you said, if, if, uh, say, say I make a mistake in five days and you are planning for the next five months and doing all the planning and make sure everything's perfect and a hundred percent, hundred percent and, and it, it doesn't end up working out. Well, mm-hmm. I have way more time mm-hmm. to adjust. Like I way more time. Like I, if I make a mistake, mistake in five days and it takes you five months to make that mistake, who's going to, yeah, I would, I've already I can learned make 10 to, more. Yeah. Like I can make 10 more mistakes and guarantee that I'll, I'll be able to, to figure out something that mm-hmm. will work in, in that, in, and you know, lots of people like that happens to a lot of people. They, they procrastinate because mm-hmm. they want it to, you, they want to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Nobody's perfect. Mm-hmm. Just go out there and mm-hmm. be okay to make mistakes. And as soon as you make a mistake, just learn the lesson and move on. Like don't I, even sweat it. Yeah. You know, don't, people got to stop caring about what other people think think just because you did Mm. that, right? Like, it doesn't matter. Mm. Everybody makes mistakes. Mistakes. Yeah. And the people that are judging you are probably the ones that make the most, but they don't want anybody to see because Mm. they're self-conscious about it. So, Mm. yeah. And, and that's, I think that's a great message, especially for kids, uh, adults, just anybody out there, like make mistakes. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes once you learn from it, because all those mistakes that you have made became stepping stones for you yep. to get to the point that you're at right now. For sure. Right. And so, um, it's just speaking of that. So now you, you eventually leave your business. I mean, uh, leave your uncles now when you dive into your own business, yep. kind of tell us about that journey, that kind of path. And what was your mindset at that time when you just, when you finally <laughs> decided to, was, to jump out? Like, it was scary. <laughs> it was really scary because I had employees at that time. And that's when, yeah. you know, you got to, you now you have to go inside and you have to keep all your emotions to yourself because yeah. you can't let your employees yeah. know that you are like freaking out you don't know how you're going to pull stuff off yeah. you don't know how you're going to do anything yeah. like i tried to approach banks i tried to like i didn't have any money like when i first started like i first started a business on my acreage mm. okay but when i moved into the city mm. like i literally had no money this was like 3 years after starting the business and even though we we were generating a little bit of cash flow. Mm. It was going all to the employees. So like I never had money in the sa- in my savings at all. So just to get into the lease, I sold my vehicle 
and oh, wow. I was borrowing my girlfriend's car oh. to get to get to work to run my business. Oh wow! So <laughs> it was it was it was crazy. Like it was it was a, it was a big building to be to be to be getting into right off the bat. Uh, I think, I think we're, we, yeah, I remember you yeah, were telling me what was it, what was it? We're paying like fifty five hundred bucks a month. So even just to get in that building, we were at uh, you know you got to do your first and last month. So mm -hmm. it's eleven thousand just to get in it. Just, no just, lights, just no nothing. <laughs> yeah. No lights, no nothing. Wow. So, um, so that was another thing that I, I, I thought. Well, maybe, maybe I can negotiate, you know, mm. on on this building somehow. And, mm. and I started thinking, like, how can I do this? How can I, like, yeah. how? Because I need some time, right? Yeah. So, like, I need some time to get the ball rolling. Yeah. Uh, so we we got some leasehold improvements. Um, uh, so we put walls up and we got everything painted and then. I somehow negotiated like four months free. Oh wow! Like I don't even know how I did it. I'm just like, <laughs> help me out. You yeah. Know? And he did it. He yeah. did it. Yeah. Yeah. So we got oh. four months free. I got those that leeway. Yeah. To uh, to try to make to try to make stuff happen because like yeah. I said, no money in the bank. <laughs> I tried to go to the banks. Man, they laughed at me. They're like, come back. They're like, come back in three years. <laughs> when you like, started, <laughs> yeah. They laugh. I'm like, come back in three years. It's already been three years. <laughs> yeah, but they're like, come back in another three, three years, years, and then we'll take a look. And uh, I'm like, nope. no, no, I'm it. not waiting. No. Uh, I'm doing it now. Like, mm -hmm. so um, there's a lot of people that were like, you're, what are you doing? Like, yeah. you're crazy. Like, you don't have enough business to be in this huge building. Yeah. There's a lot of people that were not on my side. And usually, usually, usually the closest people actually aren't on your side. Mm. And it was all of the people that, that didn't know me directly that were like cheering me on. They're like, you can do it, man. Mm. Like, I'll try to spread your business. I'll try mm. to, you know, you tell that story to somebody that doesn't, isn't really like attached yeah, touch, yeah. and they believe in you, man, hmm. they'll, they'll do, they'll do wonders for sure. But it's always it's, like it's, the closest it, people. Why, why like, do you think that is? You know, I, I honestly, I've thought about this a lot and I, I really think, there's a little bit of jealousy there. Mm. And hmm. I really think hmm. that they feel that, that there's no way that they could do it. Mm. And if you end up succeeding, it's going to make them feel small. So mm. I feel bad for those people because there's something else going on like inside mm -hmm. that is making them feel pretty insecure sure. when yeah. it comes to that, because you should be, you yeah. should be cheering. You know, I want yeah. you to win. I want, yeah. I want everybody I want everybody to win. Yeah. Like it's that's that's how it should be. You should be yeah. cheering. Even when I had um, even when I had had that business, I was you know I was cheering on my competitors. Mm -hmm. Like they were they were not my they were still my competitors, but they mm -hmm. were they weren't my enemies. They mm -hmm. definitely weren't. And you know we had we had a we had, we had a, th a thing in the shop that um, you know we nobody was allowed to talk bad about the competitors mm, mm. and that was a big thing like i was hmm. really strict on that like hmm. i wasn't strict on a whole bunch of things but that was one thing that i i i said you know don't let hmm. me catch anybody hmm. saying I, bad things about competitors and i don't care if they're saying bad things hmm, about us else? it will always come back around if you just just and that's that's an unusual thing so yeah, why so, why what like I, I, everybody's like looking at me like what do you mean like yeah and they didn't understand like we we have a meeting and, and I'm, I'm explaining this mm -hmm. and they're like, I, I don't understand. Like if somebody's saying bad stuff, like I, I got to stick up for it. I said, just believe me. Mm. Just, yeah. there is, there is no place for us to be saying bad about anybody. Mm -hmm. The best thing that you can do is say good. Mm -hmm. So, because the good will come back okay. from, and, yeah. it, and it did. Yeah. Like it, it came back to one company that was always like trashing us, right? Mm. Like they're always trashing us. Yeah. And then in one conversation, they were trashing like our company to somebody to somebody and uh this was like prior to us talking good about them yeah man oh, wow they felt so bad oh they, awesome. felt, they felt real real bad and that that company owner actually reached out and then we started doing business after that oh wow interaction so, oh wow <laughs> so it does work like yeah like it does work wow for sure wow okay so no and that's and that's i think that comes back to culture too yeah the culture definitely. that you created right yeah and because of that culture look at the result that came out of it 100%. right if you had a culture of talking bad all the time maybe that that scenario doesn't happen yeah and it goes for like i said it's, it's not even just business like mm -hmm. you know if, if if you came up to me and you're like you know this this guy's no good this guy's this mm -hmm. this guy's that and i'm like and he's saying this about you and 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 I start saying like positive about him, mm. it's gonna be t it's gonna throw yeah, you off, off like yeah. totally. It's gonna yeah. be, why are you yeah why are you, you should be saying, saying like bad stuff about this person? But, yeah, 
Yeah. It's like, whatever. Everybody has their That's own opinion. Thing. Doesn't yeah. mean they're right or wrong. Yeah. But yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. No. And so, and so now, okay, so <laughs> you, you get into this building now, like it's, you're, you're struggling here now to, 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 to get money. You have no money in, in the bank or anything like that. You start and eventually you get to a point where you clear a million dollars for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. It, it grew like real fast. Like it was like first year was like 250 and then second year was like 800 and then we, we, we passed that that million mark and the million mark is everybody everybody yeah. wants that million mark and i wanted it too like yeah. i really did i thought like man, how cool would that be like, yeah how get that cool million would that be? like to yeah. say like there's this i got a million like a million yeah. dollar was, company here. yeah like, how cool would that be and it was it was it was cool like yeah. for a very short period of time like mm. but like you just up it like there's just so many other levels right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so as soon as you got to that point i'm like looking at it going that's cool yeah. but by the next day it was like business as usual yeah let's try to go for two for two yeah. like and You're right you know, back and we did we did we okay we, yeah we we definitely oh, wow. did we, oh, wow. we got over that amount um and a little bit more but oh, wow. um it, it it didn't really change it's anything thing. yeah uh, it was just like a bigger it was just like more employees, mm. bigger, bigger facility, mm. more customers. Um, I had to change the way like I was really um, delegating. Uh, mm. Like so usually I would be managing the employees. But once it gets to a certain certain size, you can't you can't, you can't. be doing that anymore. So yeah. you have to put managers in place and then you have your salespeople and then you have your, you know, your managers that are taking care of that. And mm. it's it's a whole other whole mm -hmm. other deal so it got to a point where you know somebody in 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 the back if they had an issue well they 100 percent would not come and ask me yeah because that's that's well, i live that's yeah. not my job like yeah. you have to go ask the person because we had you know you yeah. have rules and systems yes. in place so and then i think uh, i remember you mentioning that to me and i and i think that's actually where um the composure comes in to be so big because now when you get to that level of a, of a, of a corporation of a yep. business if you're 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 the head so if one of your managers if you're having a bad day you show it then you're it's going to come down to your manager it comes down to your employees it's going to work its way down all the way down 100%. so how like because i remember I, I remember in our in our behind the scenes conversation you were saying that there was times when like you didn't have uh or yeah you didn't have enough time to to pay no not time to pay you didn't have enough funds to pay at, them at yeah. the time like maybe on the day of payday yeah. but you would figure out a way yeah 100 what's many, going through your what's yeah. going through your mind at that time there's like, actually how? like there's many many times like that <laughs> yeah no I, I i i'm proud to say that like we never ever were not able to, to pay yeah, them like yeah, ever yeah so i'm super proud of that but because there's lots of companies out there that yeah. that doesn't happen like, yeah. yeah but at that time honestly i um uh, i don't want to say i didn't I didn't care. Yeah. But there's almost like a switch that you have to have yeah. that you're like, I'll figure it out. Yeah. And it was just like a calm thing where if, if I were to tell you that you'd be like, oh, are, you, like are you sure? Are you, like, like, are you serious? <laughs> like, do yeah. you not know what's going on? Like, yeah. like, it's almost like you step back from what's actually happening. So mm. then you can, you can, you can take a better look at, at mm. how to solve that problem. Because mm. sometimes when you're, when you're in the problem, mm. you can't solve it. You have to step out of the problem. Mm. And that's same with like managers or same with uh, people that are trying to solve problems. Sometimes they need an outside source, like a business consultant mm. to come in and overlook it and mm. point out the problem. Here it is. Here's how, how you fix it. Mm -hmm. And you're good to go. So yeah. it's kind of how that, that plays out. Yeah. So I, I, I always, I, like, I, I shouldn't say I always, because I, I wasn't always like that, but yeah. I, I learned that I had, had to, to be, be like, like that, that. Yeah. because there was going to be, there was going to be more struggles coming yeah. like a hundred percent. Yeah. Like it, you never not have struggles in business and mm. you never not have struggles in life. Mm. So business is, is, is very similar to like, um, our personal relationships Just, with yeah. friends and family and, and, and whatnot. So it's very, very similar. And, and I usually like to look at it like seasons. Okay. Mm. So either you're, you know, you got spring, summer and the rest of it. Right. Yeah. Like, you have fall, you have winter. winter. Yeah. So if you can so take, I just get you to talk yeah. a little bit because of yeah. the rain, if you can take a look at, um, like basically what 
what season you're mm-hmm. in, mm-hmm. it'll it will allow you to it will allow you to deal with problems a little bit easier. Mm. So either you're coming out of winter mm. or you're just going into spring mm. and to give a really good example, like businesses like that. So you're either going through really good times, yeah. which is like spring and summer, like everything's sun is shining. Everything's good. We're making <laughs> money. Everything. Yeah. But you have to understand that it's fall is coming. coming. <laughs> it's yeah. going to come. Like yeah. there, it really is. Fall's going to come. Winter's going to come. You're going to be down and out. You're going to probably think that, you know, you're never going to get out of this. Mm-hmm. Same with the, like personal relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, business is very similar. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes you think, man, I'm never going to get out of this. Like I'm always going to feel this way. I can't get out of it. It'll come. Yeah, it'll it'll come. come. Just give it some time. Yeah. Be patient mm-hmm. and don't overreact mm-hmm. to a point where it's going to affect Mm. that relationship so Mm. just understand it's a season so whatever season season you're going into like you know tomorrow you might have a bad day but guess what the next day it's probably going to be pretty good yeah like so no you gotta have that mindset no i I, ah mindset 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 is key mindset is key you you touched on a lot of points that i i want to i want to touch on you said uh it's like a season and there's a i forget where it was but i was watching this uh i think a show or a podcast and it had like Mel Gibson and uh, uh, Denzel, Denzel Washington, yeah, yeah. and all these all these people on there, and the one thing he said is like, I wish I knew that this too shall pass. Like whatever you're going through, this yes. too shall pass. Like 100%. knowing that, yes, everything like you said, everything has a season. Summer has a season, but this too shall pass. You yep. know, we're probably just about to enter into fall, or or you know, just, or like right now. <laughs> so, but this too shall pass. And understanding that even in life, when you're going through really difficult times, yep. this too shall pass. It's not always going to be like that. No, it's it, not. It, it's not. It's not always going to be good either, either. But, you know, being able to, I think one thing that I've actually learned in life is that um, if you can manage the times when it's good and when it's bad, if you can, so, you know, sometimes you're on a good path, you know, everything is going good, you're in a good routine, everything is flowing. And then something, you know, like COVID, something comes, like COVID gets into a snag, puts you into a rut. You know, the gyms are closed, you can't go to the gym, my routine is off, this is off, this is off. But if I can manage the time it takes me to get back into the good, I think that's really where, that's a really big lesson. Managing, you know, when you come into the rut and when you get into a rut, if you stay there too long, you can stay in that rut for nine months, ten months. Then 100%. you lose a whole bunch of progress. But if you yep. can make that time frame smaller, maybe make it a week yep. or two weeks, and you can bounce back, that's really where good things really start happening. For sure. Um, and you mentioned uh, patience. How important is patience in business? It's really important. Patience is, man... I'm telling you, patience is huge. When it when it comes to you, it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter what you're doing, even in a relationship, like a personal relationship, it does, a friendship, a good friendship doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. So yeah. patience is huge, and I I think that a lot of people don't have enough patience mm-hmm. this day and age. Mm-hmm. Cause they start a business, and they're like three months in or four months in, and they're I'm like, <laughs> why don't why don't I make a million bucks? Yeah. Like, why don't I have a million bucks in my bank? Well, yeah. it takes so much time. time. And usually what happens mm-hmm. is somebody will, you know, kind of come out of nowhere. Or you think that they're coming out of nowhere. Mm. They've been grinding for like five, ten years before mm. you even see them. Mm-hmm. So patience is, yeah, patience is definitely mm-hmm. huge. But there are, obviously, there are certain things that you can do to, to get that traction mm-hmm. quicker quicker yeah. than others right like yeah. there's you know and that's where it comes into like modeling other people mm. model people that have done it before you right mm. so if you think that you're in um like a not like in a really bad situation and you feel like you can't get out like you're working a nine to five job and you're making like mm. x amount of dollars which is barely paying the bills mm. try to find somebody that has done the same thing has been in that position Mm. and go research how they got out of it Mm. like there is so many scenarios there are so many situations that somebody was let's you know a single mom was 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 barely making ends meet and she was able to get out of that whole rat race and start a business and Mm. and and Mm. you know make more money and provide Mm. for her kids 
in a better mm. way. Mm. So there, there are ways out, but people usually try to make excuses mm. on why they can't do it. And that's mm. where like the high school thing, I, I could have just said, you yeah. know what? I don't have my high school diploma. Yeah. I'm never going to be anybody. Yeah. Like I got, I'm going to listen to all everybody saying that I'm never, you know, I'm never going to get anywhere in life. I could have listened. I really could have. And where do you think that would have gone? I probably would have gone down a bad road or I would have been stuck at a job that I just hate. And, you know, you wait for the weekends because that's your only, the only, yeah, that's your only time. Right. Like, so, and that's, that's not a life. Like it really, it really isn't. And everybody has the ability. Everybody has something special that they can do. Mm. There isn't just like one type of person or one kind of person, you know, and it doesn't have to be just like building a business. Like Mm. it could be your, you know, you could be a manager of a company or being involved with a business with a good mission. And, you know, even if you are an employee and you're at the bottom, there are certain things that you can do to, to make more money and, and still be happy. Mm-hmm. Like being an entrepreneur or being a business owner, is it, it's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. And I honestly wouldn't suggest it for everyone mm-hmm. because it does take a certain certain type of person to take that much stress and mm-hmm. and not... Um, and not let it weigh them down. Do you know mm, what I mean? Mm, so mm. it's, it's a good thing to realize like <clears throat> what your, you know, what are you good, good at? at? Like, yeah. are you good at, are, are you good at, are you good at running a business or are you good at making products for a business? Because mm. then you kind of have something mm. there, right? Mm. Like maybe team niche, up with, yeah. yeah, maybe team up with somebody that like knows how to run a business and can see the value in the stuff that you make or provide or whatever, and then kind of come together. Mm. But you got to recognize what you're good at and what you're not. And, Mm. you know, I'm, I'm definitely guilty for that. Like Mm. thinking that right off the bat, like I'm going to do everything. I'm good at it. No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm good at finding really good people and, you know, um, organizing teams. I'm not good at, uh, you know, accounting or stuff Mm -hmm. like that. You got to find people that are, that are really good at that and that are passionate and then bring that team together. Mm -hmm. You can't do everything yourself. You just can't. And that's, that's, uh, that's funny that you mentioned that because that's something that even I learned uh, on the show here, right? As I can't do everything. I'm not, Ori is, Ori is a videographer. Ori is the man when it comes to videos, the lighting, the setup and everything like that. That's his, he's great at that. I, I can maybe do it, but I can't do it as good as Ori. No. So I like coming and sitting down and having a conversation. It's not that Ori can't do it, but I just enjoy it. Well, that's, my, that's my passion, right? Yeah. Ori's passion is the videography and even talking to people as well, but he's really great at that. And we, can, we, we find a way to make it work together yeah. right? and mesh together to form a great show. For sure. Right? And so um, you mentioned just mistakes that you have made in business. So I wanted to break down... Could you give us maybe three, three of your biggest, uh, I guess, mistakes that you've made in business, how you kind of overcame them and what you learned from them? There's been s- three of my biggest. There's been so many mistakes. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't think I could pinpoint it to, mm. to one mistake um, or three mistakes. But like I said, there's, there's, there's just so many that I, mm. that I could think of mm. that... Um, like hiring, hiring was, was a big, mm. like was a learning curve because like, obviously, like we said before, if you don't hire the right people, you can't build that community. Right. Yeah. So I think, um, I think, I think hiring, hiring the wrong people is a, is a big thing that I, I had mm. to learn, you know, I was, I was so convinced to look at the resume, <laughs> yeah. but then I started to realize that like looking at the resume isn't who the person is. It's mm. basically, there's lots of people that lie on the resumes. I think everybody does. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I started to really try to like learn who they were and why they wanted the job more than, um, more than what's on a piece of paper. paper. So attitude is a big, big thing. Like mm. if you have a bad attitude and a good resume, it's just, it's not going to work. It's not going to mm. work for me. I know that for yeah. sure. Yeah. But if you have, you know, a few good things on the resume, but you have like a really good positive attitude, you know, you've got good eye contact and you're really passionate about what you're doing. Mm. Yeah. You're probably going to, you're probably going to win me over. So. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Okay. So, so for, that's for hiring, uh, anything else? Um, to be totally honest, it's, um, there's been so many, there hasn't been, like a crazy amount of 
like huge mistakes. Mm -hmm. The only reason I say that is because I make so many little ones, right? And then just, yeah. And that's a huge thing too. Like it, it, if you wait to make that mistake, it almost builds like a snowball, right? Mm. So then it becomes like a, a big, big mistake. mistake. Like, so if you wait, if you, you, mm. we, you wait to make that change or wait to make that mistake, mm. it, it tends to like build and multiply and then mm. you have a huge problem. Mm. So that's why if I make a, a small mistake and I change it the next day, it's, it's not a big mistake. It's small. Yeah. It's small. It's, mm. So yeah, I can't really say there's uh there's, there's something that stands out in my mind that would mm. be like the biggest mistake ever. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, there's nothing really because I, I make mistakes so fast. Yes, like, we would usually have meetings every single morning, and if we had something that we needed to change, like in, in, in the business that somebody would suggest, I would mm. give them the opportunity to come up with, with, uh, the, yeah, with the solution. Mm. And it wasn't just me making the mistakes, like, I would allow my guys to make the mistakes too, as well. Mm. So, they would suggest something like, mm. hey, why don't we do this? Okay, let's try it. Even though yeah. inside, like, even though inside, I'm like, mm this is never going to work. Yeah. Sometimes it does. Yeah. I'm not always right. Like yeah. so, and sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't, mm -hmm. but yeah. by the next day, mm -hmm. you know, I could come back to you and say, Hey, how did that work out? Yeah. Uh, it didn't work. Yeah. Then, <laughs> okay. Let's try my way now. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and then it would just work that way. And we would always be, we would always be working through those situations. So, mm. um, that was, okay. that was a huge thing being, okay. Being open to yeah, to, being to open, open and, to, yeah. and letting your employees Actually, or letting your crew make suggestions since, without, even though you might not think, think it's it, yeah. it's right, like yeah. allow them to make the mistakes. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with that, and mm. he, and when they do make mistakes, you know you don't want you don't want to throw them underneath the bus, bus, but you you want to make it known that you know there there was a mistake. Like, Let's just address it and no big deal. We all make mistakes. Yeah, no need to worry mm. about it, right? No, so. that's I think that's a that's a that's a really cool thing being open because. I think that's sometimes, especially if it's like a, you're in your business and it's your, it's like your baby, you know, especially it's, it's yeah. kind of hard to, it's hard to do it's that. It's hard to, oh, I'm to telling yeah, you. it's really hard to it's, let someone else no, it is. give you input. I'm like, Hey man, this is, this is my thing. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's hard to do that. But if you don't, <clears throat> there's, there's so many other bad things that can happen. Like mm. say you make a mistake and I scold you. Well then the next time you make a mistake, you're probably going to either try to hide it. Mm. You're not going to tell me. It's going to take me a while to figure out. You're going to like cover it up because you don't want to, yeah. you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to, mm. you don't want to have that, those feelings, right? Mm. Like, mm. like everybody makes mistakes, Six, yeah. but if you know that and you're open to saying, Hey, yeah, he's not going to get upset, but we're going to just, yeah, we're going to fix it together as yeah. a team because that's what we are. Yeah. And that's where culture comes in. Mm. Like that's, that's culture right there. Mm. That's a leader. That's not a boss. Mm. A leader would make you feel like garbage. garbage. Yeah. A leader would mm. say, hey, yeah, you made a mistake. Now it's your job to come up with a solution. a solution. That's it, yeah. right? And at that same time, you're also helping that employee too because you're helping oh, them to learn how to, yeah. exactly. Like, you're like, yeah. okay, yeah, like I made a mistake, not a big deal. Yeah. No one's gonna like freak out and you know yeah. make me feel like I'm nobody just because, just because of that, right? Yeah. That's, and that's, you know, and that's kind of probably where um, the making mistake part was like growing on a, on a slow, you know, mm. I, w I was, I was teaching them like, it's okay to make mistakes. Yeah. And I'm like thinking, well, yeah, you know what? It is. It is okay to yeah. make mistakes. Let's do it. Yeah. Let, let's try this. Let's try that. And yeah. I was like trying so many different Good things. 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 Right. And I think that actually even makes it open. It makes it probably easier for you as a leader to make mistakes as the owner of the company. To oh make yeah. Mistakes 100 percent. Because you're open to allowing your employees to make mistakes. Yeah, it was okay. Like, they see me make mistakes a lot. I try to make some changes. Didn't work. Yeah. I literally would just say, like, <laughs> we try to make a change by the next day. And my guys were, like, my crew was yeah, real good. Did, so yeah. they would kind of, they, they, they would joke. They'd be like, hey, how'd that work out? I'm yeah. like, okay, now it's your job to yeah. figure out, like, what we should <laughs> do. do. You know, yeah. my, 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 my way didn't work, yeah. which, you know, I'm not always right. So, yeah. and, and, and that goes a long way. Like, you got to understand that, you know, to say you, you know, to say something didn't work and to say that, you yeah. know, I'm not always right or whatever, like n not many people want to say that, right? Like everybody's scared to say that. Yeah. Like they always want to be right. They always want to be the person that has all the answers, but mm -hmm. guess what? We don't, Yeah, we just really don't. So. I, I, I love that. I, I, I love that. I love that, that message actually. And so, so now you had been doing your, your, your business now, successful business for about 10 years now. Yeah. Right. 10 years now. And then, you know, you come to a point where you realize, well, you know, 